Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, all bundled up in my husband's jacket. <laughs> Listen, uh, I want to I, I want to share this with you. Some of you are going through changes now. In this chat meeting that we had, I felt inspired to give a word of encouragement to some of the members of our online church who are right now in the middle of a transitional period of their lives. Their season is a season of transition, and it's also a season of confinement. Now, some of you on YouTube may find yourself in that same type of a season. Don't curse your playpen. Don't throw rocks and fuss at your situation. No matter how confining it may feel, no matter how strict it may be, you may feel like you're locked in and locked down, but there's a reason for it. So listen to the video. Let the words that I spoke to some of the members of our group, let it penetrate your life as well and lift up your spirits, knowing that God has begun a good work and he will complete it. And if you ride it out, you will come out on the other end full of many more blessings than you have right now. God bless you. Andrea, Marlene, and Rashad, I'm getting this right now. There's a reason. All three of you are dealing with the same thing. Every single one of you have been forced into someone else's house. There's a reason for it. I cannot tell you what it is. But it has to do with God's divine purpose in your life. There's a reason for that. Thank God it's not a prison. But there is a reason. I'm not saying it to fuss at you. I just felt so stirred I had to hold it in so I wouldn't start crying. But there is a reason why each one of you guys, it's a strategic reason. God wants you in someone else's house right now. I can't tell if it's for that person or if it's for you or both. Or if there's a whole nother blessing that has to come via that route. I don't know. But I believe it's all part of God's plan that each one of you guys have ended up in someone else's house under someone else's roof. Not having your own right now. There is a reason. There's something God is doing through that experience. Do not chuck it. Do not ignore it. Ask God to teach you everything you're supposed to learn from it. Every area you're to be developed through it. Ask God help you not suck your teeth. Help you not feel like it sucks. But to just open your heart, open your mind, and give you the eyes and understanding to see what God is trying to show you. It's not always an area of correction. There's a reason, a strategic reason for this. Now see, we in America are used to having our own places. But a lot of times, us in America, we feel like we're grown, we should have our own. But there are a lot of countries, even Israel was, was notorious. There were men and women that didn't leave their mother's houses until they got married. And if, if they were 30, so be it. So I get that. But you have to understand that if God has you at someone else's house, at someone else's mercy, under someone else's rules, there is a reason. And it's supernaturally divine. It's a divine setup. I don't know what God is doing, but he will show you if you ask God to stop you from falling into the temptation of complaining and sucking your teeth. And ask God to get everything, help you get everything you to get out of it. So that when he pulls you out, and he will, you, he will also be pulling you up to the next level. Big time. And you'll know as you look back, I see why I had to go through that to get to this.
Amen. Yeah, if I make it through this, well, not if. <laughs> when I make it through this, thank you. It definitely will be something that God is going to use. Yes, it is. Yes. Because, yeah, it's not the easiest time of my life. Right. I know yeah. I'll make it through. Right. Imagine how Mary felt. Here she is, belly full of baby, coming any minute now. And now she got to mount a doggone mule and ride for miles and miles and miles for days and days. Only to land, not in a nice hotel warm room, but in a doggone barn with a whole bunch of animals and who knows what is on the ground mixed with that hay. No heat, no windows, hmm. and she got to give birth under those conditions. And she's bringing the Son of God into the world, and she can't even find her own place to give birth in. Can't even have her own hospital room. Can't have her own bedroom. So there are times when you are going through something. And you just can't seem to get on your own. And you're stuck in a condition that's not perfectly ideal for you. But something has to be birthed out of you in the experience. And you cannot be allowed to be comfortable for some reason. God will not allow you the comfort. Something's being birthed. Now that I'm talking about Mary, I get it. Something's being birthed in Rashad, Andrea, and Marlene. Something is coming forth. And travail always, travail always comes before the birth. What did you say, Marlene? I certainly will receive that. Mm -hmm. Something is being birthed. And you know what comes before the birth? What comes before the baby crowns? Who has had children? Birth pains. Birth pains. We have birth pains. Okay, that's number one. What's the next thing that comes before the baby's born? Davina, you've had children. Horrible contractions. Okay, now what comes after the contractions and before the birth? Are you talking about the labor? I'm, we already dealt with the labor. The contractions brings on the labor. What comes after the labor? Before the you start birth. Pushing baby? The, the pushing water baby. breaks, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Right. Don't be, Why not? don't be surprised if something bursts and you're wondering, what the heck is going on in my life? Recognize it as the birth part of the birthing process before God brings forth what he's bringing out of your life. Now I know why I was confused. My water broke and then I had a bunch of contractions. Oh yeah, I got after. you. I got you. No problem. No problem. Like, I, figured, like, I, I figured you'd get it backwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah I'm just right. talking about I'm, I'm talking about normal folks so okay so we got yeah, you know what when the water breaks though it's like it's so mess it's just like you can't it's just you can't stop anything right. and it does like freakness but I'm not I'm talking about spiritually though like yeah 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 exactly like grossing people out I'm sorry <laughs> oh no 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 it's all right I'm, I mean we're using it as an analogy so it's okay <clears throat> That was beautiful. Okay. So that's what's happening. God is pulling something out of Rashad, out of Marlene, and out of Andrea. They are pregnant, and they are on their, what, fourth trimester, uh, third trimester? Is that what it is? Okay. Okay. Yeah. It gets real uncomfortable. gets real tight. Real tight. Imagine yourself in the womb getting ready to break out. Getting ready to break out of that tight space. It's tight. You can't walk. You can't run. You can't come and go as you please. It's tight. But it's right. Yeah, I'm even like, I'm 
I'm even in an area that just like like I like walking at night time. I can't walk at night in this area. It's really it's not like the good it's not a good side of town. Right. It's not near the lake right. that I used to be near. So I'm just like really uncomfortable and just stuck in my room a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's something and and, I and can't. Huh? I don't like it. I know. That's why the baby kicks so much toward the end. Baby don't like it either. But something's coming out of you, and you're coming out of something. Those are the two things in the working. And I noticed in my life, the most confining moments brought forth higher levels of love. The most confining moments brought out of me, took out of me, uh, too much selfishness that I needed to get rid of. And God squeezed the selfishness out of me. Not and, saying uh, that, not saying I'm not at all selfish. That would be a lie from the pit. But I'm nowhere near as selfish as I used to be before those confining moments took place in my life. And when you get, when it gets tight, you know God's getting ready to bring something forth and bring something out. Both at the same time. You notice what... I'm sorry, let me finish this real quick. Hold that thought. You notice right after the, the birth of the baby, what comes next? The afterbirth. So the mother is bringing forth this baby. This baby's being born. But right after the baby comes, comes the afterbirth. Now the mother's got to get rid of some stuff too. So she's not only blessed with this miracle of birth, she has birthed something miraculously. She now has to chuck the stuff in her body that no longer belongs. Oh, I was just going to ask what I should be praying for right now. Just pray that God opens your eyes and helps you see, opens your ears, helps you hear. And opens your heart, helps you understand what is going on so you can settle. You can settle, become one with the experience, and enjoy the ride. Don't kick and scream, but enjoy the ride. Enjoy every nugget you get out of it. And search for the nuggets. While you're going through the experience, search for the nuggets. Seek, search the word. Seek God out. Talk to him about yourself, things you're seeing about yourself. Let him be your psychiatrist, your psychologist, your counselor, all of it, all the above. Let him be your garbage man. He takes out your garbage. Give all your garbage to him. Go through the purging process that confinement brings. Feeling like you don't have the freedom that you did or the places to go. If you remember when you were asking the Lord or you were talking with us, like, I have all this time, but I don't use it sometimes because I do this and I do that. And it's kind of strange now. Like it seems like God's drawing you closer and huh. he's like shutting out those distractions for you that you said that you asked him, okay, like I do this, but then I want to do that. So then he it seems like he's drawing you in. And he's like, okay, now I can help you get rid of that. Now I can help you get rid of that. Now you don't have that access to go for the walk because now you have, you feel like you might have nothing to do, but he's actually providing you to get closer to him. Right. So he's kind of putting you out from the world and bringing you to himself. And I remember when I was going through a spot like that, like, man, I have nobody to talk to. I have no many friends. I'm like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm just a square. I, you know, like thinking all this stuff in my mind. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I just talked to you. But then I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm coming to you for everything that I need. And then that's when I realized you are my best friend. Right. Oh, so it took me even because even it started to be where like I had nothing to do but either talk to God about everything, whether it was good or bad. So then I caught myself complaining. I'm like, well, you're just my only friend. And it's like, oh my gosh, like you have to be my only friend because I don't talk to nobody else. So in a way, like it seems like, oh, like you said, it's tight. But God's helping you, and he's answering what you asked already. So he's, like, really drawing you in right now. He's, like, bringing you a lot closer to himself. 
So some of those accesses that you had before can't be because you're getting closer to the Lord. And I got a revelation again. You, Marlene, and Rashad have been placed in a playpen. Babies do not like being put in a playpen because babies like to explore things like electric sockets. They like to explore the stove, hot, hot grease, things that break that make noise and they knock them over and they can get cut and hurt so easily. Babies can get killed getting in liquids that they are not supposed to get into and drinking them because they have no clue how harmful some things are for them. So they must be placed in a playpen with bars on it and not much playroom. Ah! And who are they in the playpen with? Nobody. They are alone with a few little trinkets, but they're alone. And they can't get out and run in the grass and, and jump and romp around and play and, and climb. They can't do all that. They're in a playpen. It's tight. But you ask Mama Sita and you know it's right. Because the next day that baby's still going to be there in, in one place, in one piece. Because they're, they've been protected by the playpen. And there's a certain level of protection that goes along with confinement. Like being placed in an incubator. Where a baby's brought when they get through being born. They're placed in an incubator at least the first 24 hours. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to live in an incubator, but I've been there. I have had times where I had to incubate myself in order to just to stay saved. And sometimes God chooses to incubate, it, incubate you his way. So you can't have all you want, can't do all you would, if you could, but you can't, so you ain't. And God says, that's right where I want you. Hmm. Now y'all chew on that while I go pay my water bill. Getting pretty tight in there, ain't it? So what are you going to do? Going to wait? and abide by the time clock of God? Or are you going to take things into your own hands and make a pure mess? God bless you with patience because God will complete what he has begun and you will thank him for every ounce of the experience that you're going through. As the old expression goes, it may be tight, but it's definitely right because God has got a purpose for your season of confinement and your season of transition. God bless you.